I played Terraria for 200 days. I'd beaten the wall of flesh and thought I was the best player in the world. So surely these next 100 days were gonna be easy. Jumping in at day 101, I thought killing mobs would get me a lot of gear. It didn't work out, but that was a fluke. A new gun? Sure, I'll take it. It's a move slow, hit hard kind of gun. And this is a titanium blessing crimson Ota. My inventory was blessed with a new weapon dropped from a mob. It's going to replace my magic missile. A lot of you in the last video told me to do this. Here's hoping the new wars become more prevalent. Turned out I had the materials to craft a weapon called the Deadly Sky Fracture. Who could say no to that name? It's hard to look for Oracle Cum and Titanium when you have no idea what either of them look like. But that didn't stop me. They couldn't hide. Even titanium, but even my hard-earned steroid-injected muscles couldn't mine that stuff. I needed a better pick, and my good mood, coupled with Sky Fracture, led me to be disillusioned with ability. The issue is maneuverability. I couldn't dodge many other attacks. I'm thinking better gear is going to solve the Queen's line predicament, but interruptions happened. It was a mistake to think Sky Fracture would be enough to ward off the mobs. Ronald McDonald hit the hardest, but simply jumping up a couple of platforms fixed that. Day 105. It wasn't my birthday, but everyone wore party hats. I mean, I did take care of the Blood Moon. An IRL friend, I know, already doubts to the story, told me there are Sky Islands in the game. And as soon as I saw these guys, I knew they had to be hiding something. And they even went as far as bringing out the big guns. Consider me impressed. Would that stop me? No, it disappeared. So it was down to the Harpy Lady sisters to stop me. Well, good luck. Apparently it was going to be a terrible night. Did everyone drink too much at a party? No, two giant eyeballs showed up. I'd been minding my own business and so tried my best as someone caught with their trousers down can. No evidence would remain that I'd died. Not as hard as this guy. But another chance came a minute later. It looked to be going the same, but the slime mount proved to be the difference to tip the scales in my favour. Day 106, I found Skypia and a balloon. Not as cool as me earning another seven souls of flight. Not long later, I cemented myself as King of the Skies, and every Sky King needs a pair of wings. So much better than my Spectre boots. A few people have told me to try and stop the Crimson and Hallow biomes from spreading across my world, but they'd spread a lot already. And after pouring over the map in great detail, I considered the situation a lost cause. So I went to destroy altars to get more ores into the world, but I'd forgotten I needed a pwn hammer. I was trying to do it with my Kobo pick. <laughs> what a joker. Next day, I did what I tried yesterday. I left one spare in case I'd need it at a later date. Cobalt was apparent, hopefully the same would be true for the other ores. I destroyed the Otis in the East Crimson, now I did the same in the West Crimson. Surely now I'd be able to find Oracle Cum. The mobs didn't make it easy, especially the Arrakis Worms, and I'm no pool of tradies. It was worth it for this Bast statue, the Bast yet in 4K colour. From my time underground, I had enough oracle cum for a spending spree of one item, and I went with the wrong helmet, are you kidding me? Meaning I was at square one, and progress was as slow as always. I put campfires down intermittently to encourage health regain, but more than once I had to mirror home. But then a brainwave rocked my core. Why explore new areas when I could go to areas already explored? And I struck gold, or oracle gum. Rectifying my previous transgression, I made the oracle gum mask. The next day, oracle gum called my name. It wasn't without its difficulties. It was a question of when, not if. And mark my words, this titanium would one day be mine too. Well, that's the last chest I open. Does anyone else love this? I could do it all day. Or this is a toss up between the two. With an oracle come pick, I can mine titanium. Such as the cluster originally found. However, this is Terraria, so things are never that simple. I'd need a titanium forge to even consider making titanium bars and costing in the region of 30 ores to make. Titanium gear wasn't on the cards anytime soon. And there I'd been thinking I'd skip straight over oracle come and jump straight to titanium. I mean, I could, but crestfallen was the word and I didn't know enough about the game to do that. I'd get there one all at a time. What better way to relax than a blood moon at the boss fight in arena? That gave the wrong impression because a giant fucking health bar appeared at the bottom of my screen and before I could comprehend what was going on, a creature larger than my neighbour's dog's tapeworm filled my screen. I doubt even Arrakis could hold this beast and yet weirdly I thought I could take it on and win fairly easily until about a hundred lasers flooded the arena. It had been an eventful day, and right at the end, a warning of approaching pirates showed up. Pirates. How hard could they be? The next couple of days were the worst days I'd had since starting the game. I thought it would be about as difficult as the Goblin Army in pre-hard mode, and at the start, I showed the regular Jolly Rogers who was in charge, but then it got out of control. Pirates were in my house, killing my NPCs, having a complete disregard for the sanctity of the home. I tried to stop them. 
And if things weren't bad enough, Davy Jones paid a visit. There could only be one captain. Are you listening? I said only one captain. It may not have been the cleanest of victories, but a win is a win. I replaced the Oracle Cum Sword for this faster pirate sword, but then switched back after realising that reforging was a thing and the Oracle Cum Sword went back to being better. That's not all. Hotel Terraria had another customer. This guy is going to fit in great here. See, this is why I drain water. You don't know what's hidden in the shadows. A bit embarrassing, I crafted an Oracle Cum chest plate but forgot to press record. Hard mode mobs do a number on me underground, so I thought having campfires down there would help, alongside a lot of torches. Weirdly, I like to see what's happening on my screen. It helps with finding this stuff at least. The pre-hard mode chests don't do it anymore. Do all the materials for better gear come from hard mode mobs and bosses? Not ideal when you struggle with both. At least titanium is free. I'd been looking forward to this moment. All the lava of the underworld turning into obsidian. And it didn't go to plan, or the second time. By far the most annoying thing about this game is the inventory control. I'm constantly depositing items from my inventory into storage. I could throw a lot of my blocks away, but honestly, I'd feel like I was wasting them. And I don't know enough about the game to know what I'd need in the future. On a plus, I made the Titanium Forge, and now I'd be able to make Titanium Gear. Just in time to replace the newly completed Oracle Cum armor set I'd made. Once I had enough. First, new sword. As fast as the Oracle Cum version, but better damage. Surely the new gear would turn the tides in my favour against Queen Slime. I didn't think I would win, but actually, I think I might. Wait, where did she go? Did, did she get bored? Must have been scared I was going to win. This lead zeppelin staircase had gone in the way of the Queen Slime fight, and this wyvern decided to keep up the trend. On your own, buddy? I didn't realise he had a friend. With the stage set and knowing I could beat Queen Slime, I went in confident. Until she ruined everything with a phase 2. I may have to rethink my strategy. She's not the only one with wings, and many of the platforms at the boss arena were no longer needed. Though being in hard mode, even simple tasks take forever. Platforms wouldn't be enough. Not with those tiny slimes and their vomit balls. I needed a means to isolate them. And with a new plan of action, I got to work. Fly into sections of the arena the mini slime projectiles couldn't hit me. Sky Fracture was key to keeping the distance. And... And, uh, things were going well until a blood moon rose and fucked things up. I couldn't see a thing IRL. However, it was a blessing in disguise because I got this new heavy hitter and this speedy boy. I didn't yet know that these two things were going to change everything. The banana rank was amazing. The outcome was the same, but her health was the lowest it had ever been. And if at first you don't succeed, try and try again. If that meant adapting the strat, so be it. Success depended on performance during phase two, and the lizard mount was going to play a part once the stage was set. One edge of the map marked the halfway point, and I didn't realise how fast this lizard actually was. Shame the same can't be said for placing blocks. At least collecting wood doesn't take long. Construction was put on hold for renovation. The weapon storage needed expanding, meaning the entire room needed largening. The chests look weird in the middle of the room. And, spoiler, I don't move them. That wasn't the only room that needed expanding. I've been a busy banner boy, and as you can see, the collection is going well. A new summon known as the Goma had found its way into my inventory. It looked like a power word equivalent of a Venonat, but I'd grown attached to my Shadow Mimic pet. Shame I can't use him for storage. A serious game changer right there. Terraria devs, write that down for your next final update. Bit of a bummer that this terrain reached as high as my platform. Probably should have checked the map before starting. Still, I don't foresee it being a problem. And frankly, I, I don't care. Day 129, I was a little short on wood, would you believe it? And I spunked it up the wall on over 5,000 torches. Next, get Haribo crystals. Now, let's see if the plan comes to fruition. The first phase of the fight I do on autopilot, it was all about that phase two. So when she sprouted wings, I took off quicker than a NASA rocket. She was quick too, I'll give her that, but her defences against my banana were no match. Plan successful. The Crystal Assassin shirt had one more defence than what I wore, but I didn't want to give up that set bonus. The Queen Slime mask, however, is staying. Reminds me of Let Me Solo Her. The Hook of Dissonant replaced the Diamond Hook, but the coolest item was the Blade Staff, summoning a magical dagger companion, and it actually helps out. I was convinced that these were used for high-level crafting recipes, but they're just water balloons. I still don't know how to feel. The enchanted dagger didn't appear to be leaving. Would he ever disappear? Would I need to resummon him? He was silent on the matter. With a solid plan in place and confidence bolstered, I needed to check if it had been a fluke. Of course not. I got boots to go with the chest plate and a mount made completely redundant by the wings I wore. The new plan, farm that bitch for loot and money. What a slime digger I am. The final piece of slime armor, the leggings were obtained. But the set bonus was the same as my spectre boots. An indication of my ever growing strength was being able to handle both a spawned wyvern and queen slime at the same time. You know what year I was born in the Chinese calendar? The year of the badass. 
This blood moon couldn't even touch me. Swapped out the red balloon for a spiked magma stone. I have double jump and wings, I don't need it. Fire damage on melee attacks however, yes please. And yes, my banana rank is a melee weapon. But sometimes bad luck can still mess you up. Which is why you should subscribe and turn on the bell to never miss a future video. And even if we do have bad workouts. The next day I was back to fighting form. Did you hit that subscribe button? On to other things. There's titanium in this world and I want it. <sighs> fills me with so much happiness. Running and flying are awesome, but teleportation, that's cool as fuck. But there were some teething problems. And I got back to important work, and got to grips with my newfound ability. And would you believe it? Even squeezed in some titanium mining. Enough for a mask upgrade. 100% this guy has some cool items to sell. Ah. Don't you just hate it when your storage fights back? Kind Wizard donated his clothes. Elegance is elimination. Balenciaga. It's dark underground, so I fixed that issue. And search for titanium. Until day 140 when I had to go stop some pirates. Unsurprising, seeing as they live so close to the sea. I don't, but then their ship does fly. How I hate spontaneous visits. Oh look, a spontaneous visit. How wonderful. Good thing I don't have a life of my own. Titania makes me feel so much better. A lot better. A lot, lot better. But there's more gear to get, so can't stop. Day 143. I can't believe my luck. An underground chest. I thought I'd destroy another altar for titanium, but got <laughs> Oracle come instead. Quick tangent, the inventory control in this game is awful, like I've already said. How many times do I have to empty my inventory? Yes. Day 144, I spent looking for titanium. After three days of searching, I finally found some. That makes me happy. I planned to spend the night underground, but duty called. It was a werewolf heavy night, and still a better love story than Twilight. Day 147, I was back to titanium hunting. And it's weird how I can beat Queen Slime, but I can't seem to beat an oversized chest with dental problems. I've gotten into the habit of storing my blade staff inside of a chest and only using it to resummon the dagger once I die because inventory space is so limited. Yes, I am that desperate for inventory space that I have to put my blade staff into a chest each time. Though someone has mentioned to me the quality of life mod magic storage. I might use it next time if I remember and if I can figure out how to install it, which I'm not sure if I can. After reaching hard mode in the last 100 days, I hunted for flinks fur to summon deer clops. Unintentionally, I found the final piece. Good thing I'd left one crew Crimson Ota still in the world, in the other Crimson biome. Why set up a boss arena when I know I can take on a one-eyed deer? After a taste of his attacks, I knew it was going to be the easiest fight of my life. The loot was trash, but I can say I beat it. I wonder what a Wall of Flesh rematch would look like. Put that thought on hold, there's titanium. Enough for leggings, a pickaxe and war axe. Back to the previous fort, wall of flesh. Pre-hard mode, what was intense, felt like a bad joke now. Being OP is fun though, and I had an itch need and a scratch. Though the following voodoo does thrown into lava didn't work. Understandably I'm scary, but seriously? At least show up for the fight. The breaker blade obtained was too slow for my lightning hands. The guide was missing. Probably dead. Classic guide move. Day 152. Enough playing around with baby bosses. It was time to get serious. With a fight that seemed impossible to win not too long ago. But I was starting to believe. Showtime. The twins. Two eyes of Cthulhu paired together by an umbilical cord. They used to their advantage to pull one another along and gain speed boosts. One specialised in a dragon's breath sort of attack. The other in lasers. Me? My speciality is my banana. With my my giant map length platform, the wing was pulled out of the bag. The night wasn't over, already I was trying to improve tactics. For example, in the first fight I got to the edge of the map and bumbled back through them to run in the opposite direction. This time I simply teleported to the other side. They didn't see it coming, embarrassing seeing as they're two giant eyeballs. A replacement guide clone had been sent to me from an available warehouse and there is a lot of cool shit I can now make. Upgrading was the agenda, however I needed souls of sight for a weapon known as the Rainbow Rod. 
where that day was going to be today. And now, <laughs> now I am a force to be reckoned with in the wizarding world. And I can even control the attack movement. I'm still getting adjusted to reforge modifiers. Got the godly modification. Would have reforged again, but didn't have the money. Turns out my lack of finance saved me from my own ignorance. It's an amazing modification. Call me King Arthur. I have Excalibur, the first weapon to break the 100 damage barrier. I made a joust with more damage, but his range of motion was awful. I wasn't done yet. The keen optic staff allowed me to summon two miniature eyes. They were slow, but hit harder than the dagger. The twins are not going to stand a chance against this gear. I'm so excited. They're literally going to have cataracts by the time I'm finished with them. Okay, so I switched back to banana rank. The rainbow rod is a fantastic weapon, but not for the twins. I'd need to wait for night, so I tidied up the underground road with grey bricks, and as soon as night came, I was back to twin killing. The adjusted sprout was to focus on the dragon's breath eye first, before I turned my focus onto the laser eye, the greater difficulty. Some of you observant subscribers might have noticed I was back to the dagger summon. The eyes suck. Blink and you'll miss this. Day 156, I got hallowed armor with an overall defensive stat boost of 1. Evidenced by the following twins fight. The strats were fine tuned as much as a car from Fast and Furious. Enough that I was summoning the twins back to back. And that makes me curious. When re-summoning bosses, are they reincarnations? And if yes, that really sucks. Because being reincarnated just to get killed over and over again seems inhuman. Main. Give me that fucking loot. Slime rain the next day. The dagger did the work. Look who's bad. Never mind. I'm a boss killer. This ain't no filler. The eyes don't see me coming in my nightly thriller. The destroyer visited and um destroyed me. The next day I put up new banners, and then tried to reforge a second banana rank with a better modifier than Godly. I couldn't, and I'd killed the twins so many times you'd think I'd be bored, but I, I really wasn't. However, I had no more eyes to summon them. The next morning I bought a Code 2 yo-yo from the merchant that did 71 melee damage, until I reforged and it went up to 83. Coupled with the yo-yo glove I dug out from storage, I'd be able to throw two of these bad boys out at a time. And after a test run underground, I made the decision to replace the banana rank. This is an experiment for the next boss. The Destroyer! The experiment was to see if its lasers would pass through the solid blocks, and if you didn't get epilepsy from the display on screen, you'll have seen that it didn't pass through the solid blocks. As for the Rainbow Rod, I kept distance, but its damage was pitiful. The rest of the day I visualised different methods of attack, and I think I found a solution. But I put it on hold as I thought it over, and worked on finishing the underground road and getting background tools in the basement of my house. Until these were finished they were going to be a distraction. So what was the plan for the destroyer? I unveil the skybox, or the construction of it, an architectural feat designed to shield destroyer attacks and enable mine, or it would come to enable mine. Day 170, the crew of the Flying Dutchman returned for revenge, and it seems that wolves are enough to stop them too. I spoke too soon. Why? Why did I speak too soon? Because Davy Jones couldn't do anything, that's why. This tiny pirate guy summoned reeks of mutiny, and I'm here for it. And what better place to be initiated than the jungle?
When night came and the destroyer with it, I chilled at the skyblocks. The thing left me completely alone. So I slapped down some platforms, threw a few incantations out there and would leave to use Excalibur every now and then. But it got stuck under his body and died. A minor setback. Take two, I relied on Rainbow Rod for ranged attacks and Excalibur for up close and personal while Mana recovered. That changed when I realised that Yo-Yo was the smarter play. Cheap strategy, but I was proud to find a solution. The winnings were souls of mind. Used to make a light disc, better than both the banana rank and rainbow rod, then modified into killer frisbees. These guys are the definition of sore losers. Just can't let their defeats go. Back to Derek the Destroyer, which kind of sounds like a porn star name. I fine-tuned the fight, figuring out how to lure him close enough to use my light disc, and then refined it further by luring him into the skybox itself to Excalibur the shit out of him. The damage was so great, I killed it twice in a single night. Now I'm the destroyer. Maybe I went overboard with how many of these I made. It only cost, mm, somewhere in the region of all of my souls of night. But how else could I properly destroy the destroyer? Tonight it was killed three times. I think the strategy is working. Until the air got cold. And Skeleton Prime himself spawned. But somehow I wasn't surprised. Called it a hunch, the long platform wasn't ideal for the fight. Neither was the skybox. Turned out the arena was the best place. He was tanky, but pro skills earned my victory. Earning souls of fright, frightening, enabling me to make the pickaxe axe, both pickaxe and axe. Who would have thought? After looking on the wiki, Excalibur could be upgraded to true Excalibur. However, true Knight's Edge was also another option, and that needed other swords. First, the grass blade. Second, the Volcano Blade. Needed Hellstone Bars, but that's as inconvenient as it got. Third, Blood Butcherer, one of my pre-hard mode swords. Fourth, Muramasa. Location, the dungeon. I wasn't hopeful. The chests had been looted. Just as I thought, one chest remained and it was stone code empty. But then I checked my weapon storage and it was already there, so what an idiot. Those four swords made the Knight's Edge. Alongside Souls of Fright, Might and Sight, True's Knight Edge was born. Even cooler than Excalibur. And after reforging to have the Godly modifier, it replaced placed Excalibur as my main sword. Rumours of a new ore had reached my ears. The Chlorophyte Claymore was a massive disappointment. No auto swing. Deal breaker. But Chlorophyte wasn't off the menu, and neither was I. Somehow I accidentally spawned Plantera, and despite performing well, I got stuck and became dinner. But I did find three green hearts that permanently increased my health by five each. Why does Chlorophyte Ore have to be located in the most dangerous biome of the game? Because the devs are psychos. Not that it stopped me from getting true Excalibur and became my main sword again. The destroyer was humiliated five times. Day 178, it was time to get serious about Plantara. Turns out if you break one of her bulbs, she spawns. Explains last time. Doesn't explain how I beat the destroyer another seven times in a night. Look how its health vanished. I wish the map showed when it's night because it's hard to tell when you're underground and you're making a 100 days video, or a 200 days video in this case. Progress was perpetually interrupted and I need to say how much I hate poison. With 6 destroyers to go, I got to the skybox early. A blood moon rose. Should I still go ahead? Obviously. Both had turned from a tragedy to a comedy. Look at me swing that sword. Not even phased. A cool side note, I got to see the destroyer spawn out of a wormhole. No pun intended. The winds had netted 778 souls of might and 587 hallowed bars. The next day, all I did was excavate. On the day of 181, the sun was blotted from the sky. A solar eclipse began. Basically, I roided up Blood Moon with new enemies. With the firepower I was packing, it wasn't hard. Only thing is, it had caught me by surprise and my inventory was full, so I was constantly dropping items in place for loot in case they despawned. I still don't know how that mechanic works. And for surviving, I got the achievement, Kill the Sun. Here's a look at the inventory of a sun killer. My wallet has been heating up too. But money wouldn't create the jungle arena.
Sun Killer vs Giant Plant. What's your prediction? Well, it turns out Crate in an open area gave her both a speed and accuracy buff. Giant Plant took the win. For fight two, I thought a box would break her momentum and offer protection from her bullets. It was useless. I lasted even less time than the last fight. Giant Plant two. For fight three, we fought back in the shaft, given a massive maneuverability and accuracy debuff to her. It's kind of unfair, but that's life. I got a jungle key. The day of Black Sun happened for a second time. A juiced up version of the first with way more projectile enemies. And a mock the size of a car. This is the sort of intensity of an event I was looking for. This is by far the best yo-yo I'd come across in the game. 174 base damage. Who's gonna say no? Not me. Here's the rest of my inventory. I can't be bothered to explain. What I can explain is the combination of true Knight's Edge, true Excalibur, and a broken sword I'd gotten from the moth. Oh, it's so shiny. Unlike a certain obnoxious weed. And before I knew it, a plant warrior summoned joined the crew. A crew of only me, a purple chest, and a bouncing heart. Enough fun. Time to find the jungle temple. Found it. The temple blocks couldn't be mined. If only I had a key. Oh wait, no one saw this coming. The temple was linear in design, but dangerous. Especially the traps. Kind of unfair because I had a key, so surely I was a guest. Haven't they heard of hospitality? Day 190 was another solar eclipse, but I had more pressing matters to attend to. I was confused. The final room was a dead end. Wasn't there supposed to be a golem here? Then I saw the shining sun icon that must teleport me to another part of the dungeon. I'm supposed to fight him here. You could have at least included a warning sign. Wow, how lucky am I returning home to find the solar eclipse is still in full swing. The moth wings on the other hand. This is a small room so I'm hoping doing this works. The lizard speed has saved my ass so many times, even if the rider doesn't know what he's doing. And the same was true here. The second rematch of the day didn't go to plan. Still, the previous fight got me the meatball stuff. Right, it seems these beetle husks are a valuable item. If I got turtle armor, I'd be able to make even better armor. In good time, a golem needed farming. A strategy was born. Focus on the hands first before getting him to the laser shooting stages. When it came to them, a few controlled steps was only required to dodge. And that's all there was to it. The strat was good enough, the enclosed space didn't matter. The terror blade helped a lot, but I prefer to think it was mainly down to skill. As for the loot, the heat ray gun replaced the meatball staff, the stinger gun was nothing special, the fists were cool, but nothing more. A pet lizard replaced my shadow mimic, and the rest of the loot is on screen. I thought I'd only need turtle shells for turtle armor, but no, I needed chlorophyte too. I had enough in storage for leggings, but that was about it. I'm a Seth Brundle bug with 75 defense. Look at this. The collection is going to outgrow the room, and I can't have that. Not when I'm here until 300 days. It was a serious expansion, not half-hearted in the slightest. I went through so much stone making the grey bricks, the platforms, and the background walls. Now it doesn't matter how large the collection gets. Day 199 was for bosses. Boss summoning items were in storage. I started with the wall of flesh, the entrance to hard mode Terraria. I tried to teleport behind it for fun and got hit with a ton of damage. It didn't matter because I'm built different, but I ran into the same issue as before. My following voodoo doe into the lava didn't summon another wall of flesh, and I do not know why. Next, the first hard mode boss. She used to cause me so much trouble, and I killed her six times just to prove a point. Skeleton passed his prime, followed her to the grave another four times. And last but not least, the Eye of Cthulhu. I'm going to have the unedited fights on screen, just so you can see how quickly I dealt with the thing. For the last day, I had a task of robbing the grave. I'm going back to the dungeon. That was easy. Next task, defeat some cultist leader. How hard could it be? Well, hard enough that I couldn't find him. There was an entire new section to the dungeon that was a maze. There was an enemy with 5,000 health that I thought was the leader, but turned out to be an elite level mob. With only one day left, my chances didn't look good and time ran out. I got a key sword that did more damage than the terror blade, but let's be real, it isn't nearly as good. And that's another 100 days in the bag. But as good as that was, and as much as we did, the biggest challenge was yet to come.